The Rugby Championship is 41 days away from kicking off. Now, South Africa today earlier announced a bit of a camp squad, a 33-man squad name for that. And I thought here at the sports booth what we should do is look into a way to improve the Rugby Championship. Now, obviously, the Rugby Championship came from the back end of the Tri-Nations, competed between the Springboks, the Wallabies, and the All Blacks. Three great rivals. We then included Argentina with the growth of Argentina and their performances, a well-deserved addition to the Rugby Championship. So we went from the Tri-Nations, and instead of calling it something stupid like the Quad Nations, they decided it was the Rugby Championship. Now today, what I'm going to try and convince you, all the good people of the Sports Booth team, is that the Rugby Championship should again expand, and we should have a Southern Hemisphere Six Nations. Now you're probably thinking, look, we've we've expanded in recent times, Uh, has the addition of Argentina been worth it? Do we need a Six Nations? Have we got Six Nations good enough to be in a Six Nation pool, a Six Nation tournament? My answer today is yes, yes it is. And I'm going to run you through, I'm going to look at what Six Nations over in the Northern Hemisphere do, how they do it, um, how their kind of second division works and how we could potentially have a promotion relegation in two tournaments going at one time um, to really grow the sport and make the international part of the calendar really beneficial. So to start off with the Six Nations in the Southern Hemisphere, the teams involved, we're going to have the All Blacks, the Springboks, the Aussies, and the Argentinians. All four stay in the tournament. Obviously, add Japan, a great international team, a good commercial ad, uh, just makes a lot of sense for them to be involved in a bigger competition. And the last team may be a little bit controversial, but I'm going to go with Samoa. And let me explain why over someone like Fiji, who, as we've seen with the success of the Fiji Endura, are performing really well. I've just taken this from world rankings, and, and I'm going to get into the whole competition to start off with. But what I've done is taken the best six teams in the Southern Hemisphere based on world rankings. When we look at that, the All Blacks are third, South Africans are fourth, Australia are seventh, Argentina are eighth, Japan tenth, and Samoa twelfth. So that would make up the six nations. Now, we, we discussed this on the podcast, and if you don't listen to our podcast, every uh, Tuesday it normally comes out, uh, me and Husey, a Wallabies fan and an All Blacks fan, get together, discuss all the good things going on in rugby. But we kind of discussed this because it was put out there as an idea, and I've come to agree with it. The rugby championship does need to expand, and it needs to expand to six nations. However, I don't want to take that opportunity away from other nations to be able to participate in the six nations. So what I've done with this concept, I've actually made two divisions. So we've got that is our first division, that's the Six Nations. And then we've got Division 2, uh, you can call it the Championship, you can call it whatever you want. I've gone with Division 2 to keep it simple. Again, all I'm doing is taking the next six highest ranked uh, Southern Hemisphere teams. Now, again, Southern Hemisphere, I know Japan, but, but just teams that are close in proximity, uh, and it makes sense that we play in this tournament. So I've got Fiji at 7th, uh, ranked 13th overall. Tonga at 15th overall ranked Uruguay, who are ranked 17th, Namibia, that are ranked 21st, Chile, who are ranked 22nd, and Hong Kong, who are ranked 24th. So the way I would do it is you have the Six Nations, and then you have the Second Division Six Nations occurring at well. Now, I understand the expenses of like a Fiji travelling all the way to Chile, um, how that would all take place and, and how it would work. I'm not 100% sure. I did think maybe you could split this into two free divisions and go like Fiji, Tonga, and Hong Kong playing one uh, group, and then Uruguay, Chile, and Namibia playing like another group, and then the winners battle off. But basically what I want is to give these six teams an opportunity to qualify for the Six Nations. So what I'd be doing is you'd have the Six Nations, say, based on rankings now, the All Blacks went ahead and won it, and Samoa finished last. Say, based on rankings again, Fiji won the second division tournament. Fiji would play Samoa in a playoff game. If Fiji win, they are now in the first division, the Six Nations, whereas Samoa is now in the second division. However, how does this compare to the Six Nations in the Northern Hemisphere at the moment? Now, I looked at their world rankings and taking it from you know, the Six Nations currently, we have Ireland 1, France 2, Scotland 5, England 6, Wales 9, and Italy 14. So if you add up all of the Southern Hemisphere Six Nations rankings, you end up with a total of 44, so an average ranking of 7.33333 recurring. 
if you add up all of the Northern Hemisphere Six Nations rankings, you get a 37 total for about a 6.17 recurring, um, 6.166 recurring seven uh, rankings. So basically, you've kind of got one ranking different. Now, obviously, if we're taking this probably four or five years ago, it may may have skewed the other way. Uh, so it's not like we're, it's a, it's a vastly superior comp or anything like that. Very similar comps. The way the Northern Hemisphere do theirs, they obviously don't have a relegation, um, but there's a lot of questions around should they, especially with the way perform, George is performing at the moment. So at the moment, they do like two, four pools in the championship, and then they do like a competition. I've kind of just said, look, imagine if they just did it the way I've set it up and they had a secondary Six Nations. They'd have Georgia, who are ranked 11th, Portugal, who are 16th, Romania, 19th, Spain, 20th, Netherlands 26th and Belgium 29th. So if that was their championship, you know, those rankings actually add up to be an average ranking of 20, whereas the one I did with the Southern Hemisphere Second Division is an average ranking of 8.67 recurring. So you've actually got a better, higher ranked second of in the Southern Hemisphere than you do in Europe. Now obviously a lot easier for those teams to travel, to get to the games, but again, commercially, at the moment, we're acting like this isn't a commercial commodity. It's a, it's just a completely, what if we did this? So all in all, it makes sense to expand the Six Nations. How they do it can, can differ. And I, I wouldn't even be opposed to a, hey, look, here's our Six Nations, the All Blacks, South Africa, Australia, Argentina, Japan, Samoa for now. The loser goes into like a playoff series against Fiji and Tonga just for now. Just say, let's say Samoa lost. And then, so then they go into a free game series against those other two teams. Highest on that table qualifies, something like that. Uh, just an opportunity for Fiji and Tonga to be able to play at that level and, and, and I guess, expand that level. The, the saying goes, you know, you can't get better without playing that better opposition. What I would then do is actually play those six nations at the same time. Not the same time of the day, but in the same time. So at the start of the year, we have the six nations tournaments. We then have the Super Rugby kickoff. After Super Rugby finishes, we go into those mid-year tests, you know, over the Lions series or whatever they've got. I know World Rugby's got something planned at the moment with with uh, the t all the teams playing again together. Um, and then you've got, for New Zealand, the NPC, for Australia and stuff, looking at something else. And then the end-of-year tests at the end of the year. And it just means the rugby calendar sets up perfectly that you've got this rugby championship at the start of the year. The end of the year is where you, you play, go overseas and play those Northern uh, Hemisphere teams. I do like the idea, and Husey came up with this on the podcast, that the winner of the Southern Hemisphere and the winner of the Northern Hemisphere play off in a one-game series, just a one-off. You know, one year that someone in the Northern Hemisphere hosts it, then Southern Hemisphere, Northern Hemisphere. Just as a game, again, completely commercial, but I think it adds value and, and as... Husey said, you, you put a cup name on it, you get it sponsored, all of a sudden it's, you know, the TikTok Cup, which uh, is run and hosted and, and all over TikTok, and, and you've got these two two fantastic teams. So a good example would have been the All Blacks versus against Ireland. I know they'd already played the series, but with the series, especially the series potentially leaving us in that, that new mid-year uh, tournament happening and mid-year, I guess, competition, it makes a lot of sense to then now give these teams a chance to be also a part of, of our local game and, and talent. So, yeah, I, I would love to hear your opinion on if the, if the rugby championship should keep expanding. I think it's just common knowledge now that it should. It's about the commercials, how they make it, sure it all works, who they put in, where they put them in. I think what we're seeing from the Jura over in Fiji has everyone thinking Fiji should definitely be the team up there. And, and with a video I've got coming up soon about the Fijian squad for the Rugby World Cup, it's hard not to argue that over Samoa, but I've just gone off the world rankings for now. But like I said, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Should it expand? Who should we be looking at? Are there any other teams I missed that potentially could take, you know, Hong Kong's place or anything like that? Should we just make this all the way down so there's divisions of all international teams uh, in, southern hem in the Southern Hemisphere slash in those regions, so should there, instead of me, like, you know, doing Division 2, should there be a Pacific region, an Asian region, an African region, and a Southern, uh, South America region, and then something like that, uh, let me know your thoughts, as always, if you like these videos, please subscribe, it helps a lot, um, and let us know anything else you want us to do, for now, thank you for joining me, I've been Luke from the Sports Booth, 
We will see you later.